Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina and I want to just say hi before I start this video. This was at a summer camp for Hillsong Berlin youth and young adults at the end of July and it was super duper fun. I had the honor of sharing a message about how being planted in church saved my life and my dear friends actually recorded it for me so you guys get to see what I got to share in the middle of a field in the middle of Brandenburg and it was super fun and I'm so glad that it got filmed because there were a lot of my friends that also couldn't be there and this way you guys on YouTube also get to see it so I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that God speaks to you through it being planted in church has definitely saved my life and I think I'm also going to elaborate on this message in a future video. So let me know if you want to see that because there's a lot of stuff that I couldn't pack into five minutes and I'd rather share a bit more about that in another video. So God bless you and enjoy the message. Um, today I want to share with you how actually being planted in church saved my life. It saved my life and it changed my life. Um, and I just want to ask you a question. I've seen some notebooks around here. Who really loves taking notes? Who really loves yeah. writing in their diary, taking notes? Okay. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> come on, John, you're an overcomer. <laughs> so I love writing in my diary, and I've actually, um, it's quite helpful because I've been writing one since 2011, since I was 13 years old. And um, it's kind of funny, like, I'm like, okay, I know what I ate on the 3rd of December, 2011. That's great. Thank you that I wrote this, I wrote this down. Um, you know, or what happened on my 15th birthday. But actually, in all seriousness, um, writing a diary has shown me how much I've already overcome. Yeah. Well, I didn't just write about food, I wrote yeah, about yeah, what things going on in my life, right? Yeah. I, so I said I've been keeping this journal um, since around 11 to 13 years old. And this week, I was actually happened to be looking through some of my entries from the first couple of years in Berlin, which is uh, 2016, I moved here, right? So I'm 18, I'm lost, I'm broke. I'm confused, mm. and Berlin just like takes me and turns me around and spits me back out again. That's what I always say about my <laughs> journey in Berlin. And um, yeah, I had no job. I'd spent most of my free time going out, getting way too drunk, and um, going on dead end dates, and actually spending nights with people I didn't know. Um, and I was so saddened to see how I wrote about myself in my diary at this time. It was really horrible to read like how sad, yeah, it was sad, guys, <laughs> it was sad. Um, I was literally writing, you know, unfortunately it's who I've become about my sexual sin. And I was writing, you know, trying to justify my behavior by saying, this doesn't mean I don't love Jesus. And it's just ended this way. This is how I have become. And this made me so sad to read like this. It seemed like all hope had gone, right? And I look back and I just see that I put all my trust and validation in people, toxic relationships, mm. even though the Bible says that we can trust in God and that by trusting him, we can have an amazing, fruitful life. Mm -hmm. In Psalm 37 verse 5, the Amplified Version says, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do it. Come on. Amen. While going through all of this stuff, I was still actively searching for church to call home because that's how I grew up. And um, I just loved it, and I missed it. I missed church more than I could imagine. And I remember I also, as well as a normal diary, had a God journal, I used to call it, which was a separate diary, which you don't need to separate God in life, right? Come on. <laughs> but I had a separate journal, and in there I found the message notes from my very first Sunday at Hillsong Berlin mm -hmm. on the 2nd of July, 2017. So it's just been... Come on. Pastor Mark was preaching, and reading these notes, I was blown away because I was comparing it to the notes in my other diary mm. and God knew exactly what I needed to hear because the message was about letting go of shame and not losing your way on the journey to what God wants to reveal to you. Mm. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> at this time I felt a bit like I was living a double life, you know, because I believed that Jesus Christ had died for me on the cross and I was no longer a slave to sin because of it, but somehow I was still not able to align my life with that truth. Mm. I felt so empty and every time I went to church and spent time in community, I felt closer to my purpose. Um, I found one diary entry from a few months into finding church where we've been at dinner party. I was with Sarah, I think, and with Anna, like way back then with Chris, I think as well. 
and I wrote, tonight totally rescued my mood. That was like how I started to feel about church. Wow. And so going to church, attending these community hangouts, kickstarted my journey back to Jesus. And it's so amazing to see the whole process written on paper. Yeah. Let me tell you, the people around you, the people who are surrounding you, make all the difference. Through spending time with people in church who shared the same godly values and were not interested in my very crazy, horrible past, I saw visible changes in my life. I began spending Sunday in church all day, not just one service, and literally going, I don't want this day to end. I don't want to go home today. Um, <laughs> I think some of us have been there. So good, yeah. But church isn't limited to Sunday. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Mm. In the waiting, God is still working. Yeah. It's a journey, but you will get there. Come on. Oh um, yeah, so even after being connected in church, I was still struggling with the same thing as before. It's not going to go over way, over, uh, away overnight. Um, but I started reading my Bible and showing up more. And the more I read my Bible, and I, the more I wanted to show up more. And the more I showed up more, the more I wanted to read my Bible. Um, yeah, when I made a commitment to volunteer in church about two years ago, God really gave me this nice friendly push in the right direction, like when the kid is riding their bike and the parents are like, off you go, and you're like, oh, no! <laughs> but you know, it's a really great thing when God just gives you that friendly push. He didn't leave me on my own though, right? He gave me that push, but he's alongside me. He's walking behind me. Um, there is no condemnation in God, and he can work with you, even when you feel like you're still struggling. With him. Yeah. So good. by saying um, four points and these are things that I've held close to my heart since hearing them that day even if I may sometimes actually completely forgot that Mark has said these things um, so they've cool. been with me all the time in these last four years and I encourage you to write these down write these down if <laughs> you're taking notes um, and dwell on them and let God just kind of go let them go deep into your heart let God use these because these things actually brought me to freedom and now I can just say I am free from seeking validations in guys, seeking validation in any kind of toxic relationship. I am free from sexual sin and I am free, full stop. No, no but. And the best thing is that Jesus also died for you, right? So yeah. He yeah, man. you free too. You are free. Come on. Come on. Yes, Come on. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, four points. He gives us a new identity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Your identity is not a slave fear or to sin but a child of god yeah number two be good at waiting i'm still not there yet but be good that's good because being still and peaceful where you are in the moment is so 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 valuable three feed on the word of god it is like daily food and it nourishes our souls and number four stop beating yourself up about sin and shame jesus has already carried the burden that's Amen. not beating yourself Amen. up was actually in Mark's message. And <laughs> it was literally like, oh my God, this is what I've been needing all this time. Um, these are all points that I needed to hear back then. And I believe someone needs to hear them today. Amen. Let me finish with Galatians 4 verse 7. It says, now you are not slaves like before. You are God's children and you will receive everything, everything he promised his children. Come on. Thank you. Amen. Amen.